In this tutorial, we're going to learn about idempotence in HTTP methods. Yes, that's actually a word. And it's an important property of HTTP methods according to the specification. We'll learn what that means. So when I was learning about RESTful web services, the one thing that confused me was the difference between a put and the post. Like we've already seen, you use a put when you want to update an existing resource and you use a post when you want to create a new resource. But if you search online, you're likely to find a lot of material that contradict each other when it comes to the put and the post. Some are just plain wrong, while others tell you the right thing to do, but they don't really explain why. So I'll try to explain the difference and hopefully it'll be clear to you by the time you're done with this tutorial. So think about method classification. There are two ways in which we can classify the four popular HTTP methods. So what are the four popular methods? The get, the post, the put, and the delete, right? So if you were to classify these HTTP methods, there are basically two different ways in which you can classify. Let's start with the easy classification. The method get is a read-only method because it gets something from the server, whereas the methods put, post, and delete are write methods because they write something to the server. Right? The put does an update, a delete does the actual delete, and the post submits something to the server. So these three methods are write methods, whereas the get is a read method. Right? So this is one way to classify the four HTTP methods. Okay, so we'll look at another way of classifying these methods. Now, since a get is a read-only method, it's safe to say that no matter how many times you do a get request, nothing changes on the server and it's actually safe to make multiple get requests, right? Let's say you're getting a message, right? You do a get request to get a message with a particular ID. It doesn't matter how many times you make that request because nothing changes on the server. Right? So it's safe to make multiple get requests and not worry about the side effect. But how about put, post, and delete? Since these are methods that write to the server, you obviously cannot make these calls multiple times, or can you? Just because an operation is not read-only doesn't automatically mean that it cannot be duplicated. Take, for example, this piece of Java code. This is an assignment statement. Assume that count is an integer variable. So assigning a value 100 to count variable is definitely not a read-only operation. The statement writes the value 100 to the variable count. Now, imagine if you were to repeat this operation three times, right? Lines two and three don't really do anything. Well, maybe they do write the value to the variable, but for all practical purposes, they don't have any effect, right? It's only the first assignment that writes the value. So you can actually repeat this like a hundred times and it still doesn't change anything. The value of count will still be 100, by the time you're done with all these different repetitions. So this nature of some of the operations that let them be repeatable is important in HTTP methods, right? So it's an important consideration. It's an important property of methods, whether they are repeatable or not. Like we saw, get is clearly a repeatable operation because it's read-only. Now the question is, are put, post, and delete repeatable operations or are they non-repeatable operations? Let's start with delete. Say you make a delete request to slash messages slash 10. It deletes message ID 10. Now, let's say you were to make that same call again. Message ID 10 is already deleted, so nothing happens. While it isn't really required or desirable to make multiple delete calls to the same resource, you can see that it's not a problem at least. If you were to make the repeated calls by mistake, you would not have unwanted side effects, right? So delete is actually safe to make multiple calls with. Okay, so how about put? Let's say you make a put request to slash messages slash 20 with some message text in the request body. This is going to replace whatever was message ID 20 with this new message text in the request body. So you make the exact same call again. 
message ID 20 is again replaced with the exact same message text again. Make the same request a third time and the result is still the same. Well, guess what? Even put is safe when it comes to making multiple calls. If you were to accidentally repeat a put request, well, don't worry about it. The final saved message remains the same after every request. So you can make a get request as many times as you want. There is no effect on the server. You can make a delete request as many times as you want. It's only the first delete request that has an effect on the server. Subsequent requests do not. And again, you can make a put request as many times as you want. It's only the first request that has the effect on the server. Subsequent requests do not have an effect on the server. The problem, however, is with the post request. If you were to make a post request to slash messages, you create a new message. Say you forgot you made this post request and you issued this request again. Now we've actually created a duplicate message. Repeat that call and you get another message. So every time a post request is made, something new happens. So this is clearly not a safe method to make multiple calls with. Every duplicate call changes something on the server by creating a new resource. It's actually not a good idea to make multiple post calls unless you actually need multiple resources. Okay, so post is different in this case. So now we have another way of classifying HTTP methods into two types. The first one is a set of methods, including get, put, and delete, which are safe for making multiple repeated calls without having to worry about the impact. They may not all be read-only, but they do not cause subsequent effects if you have, you know, if you're making the same request multiple times. And there is this other category consisting of the post method, which you have to be very careful with. You make only as many calls as you need. If you make a repeated call, you actually end up changing something on the server. So the methods of this first category are called idempotent methods. Get, put, and delete are idempotent. Post is non-idempotent because every time you make a repetition of the request, you change something. Here's the Wikipedia definition of idempotence. Idempotence is the property of certain operations in mathematics or computer science that can be applied multiple times without changing the result beyond the initial application. So get, put, and delete are idempotent and post is by definition not item put in. And this is what the HTTP specification requires. The HTTP specification requires get, put, and delete methods to always be item put in. If a client makes a request with one of these methods, they don't have to worry about making duplicate requests. But if they're making a post request, they cannot safely make duplicate requests without any effect on the server, which is why the resource creation should always be via a post method because resource creation requests are non item put in. When you make a resource creation request, you do create a new resource every time. Even if you repeat the same request, you end up with multiple resources created. But updating a resource like we saw can be called multiple times safely. Deleting a resource can be called multiple times safely. Right? And of course, getting a resource can be called multiple times safely, which is why an update request ideally uses an HTTP put method, which is supposed to be item put in as per the specification. Right? So this is the difference between the put and the post. A put request is item put in, and a post request is non-item put in. Like I've mentioned before, these methods have standard meanings. The fact that it's a standard means that if you ignore it when implementing your APIs, you will either confuse your clients or you'll cause their code to function improperly. For example, one common thing that many APIs do is cache some of their GET responses. When a client makes a GET request, what the API does is it also caches the response so that if there is another GET request to the same resource within a short period of time, it doesn't go and compute the resource again. It just serves it from the cache because it's already there and it had recently calculated the same content a little while back, right? So this caching 
works only on get request because it doesn't change anything on the server so it's cacheable you can definitely build an api that creates new resources when a client calls a get but if you do that you will not have your clients using your api for long they will definitely be confused on the other hand if you choose the right http methods your client can build safeguards to make sure duplicate requests does not happen for non item putting methods take for example the browser refresh button every browser has a refresh button that does a very simple function it just resubmits the last http request that was made by the browser if the last request happens to be an item putting request like a get the browser just goes ahead and make the makes the request when you hit refresh because it knows that it's a non item putting request there's nothing that happens on the server but if it were a post that was the last request that the browser submitted and you hit refresh the browser warns you right let's say you've submitted a form which is likely a post and now you hit refresh the browser wants you with a message it says something like you already submitted this data before are you sure you wish to resubmit this is simply the browser protecting you from making a duplicate non item putting request so it pays to generally use the right http method for the right operation because the client can use safeguards like this to protect the user okay so in this tutorial we learned about what item putting and non item putting requests are make sure you keep this in mind when you're designing your restful apis so that you choose the right methods for the right operations thanks for watching